Hi everyone, welcome to Sweet Peace Sits Inspirations. My name is Sydney and today I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks with you guys today on how to better your amber grooming. A lot of these tips and tricks that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is what I wish I would have known when I first started learning how to make amber grooming. Um, now, if you are unfamiliar what amigurumis are, they are pretty much just a crocheted stuffed animal. And the overall purpose of your stitches when making an amigurumi is you want your stitches to be tight and not be holy. Um, when you go to fill it up with the polyfill or whatever you're using, you don't want that poking out and have holes within your project. Um, so the very first tip or trick that I have for you guys today is going to be based on your yarn. Now, when I typically make a amigurumi, I use a acrylic yarn. Um, some people will also use like this plushy yarn. It just depends on your overall look for your amigurumi and maybe even what the pattern calls for. But I will typically use something that has an acrylic yarn to it. Um, another good yarn to use, especially for like a worsted weighted yarn is a cotton, specifically peaches and cream cotton that you can probably pick up from your local Walmart. Um, I will typically find a yarn that's a little bit more stiffer, like Red Heart, um, just because you want to keep the form of your amigurumi and you don't want your, uh, before you fill it up, you don't want your amigurumi to be kind of floppy. You want it to be more stiff than just floppy. Um, think of it almost kind of like making a bag or a basket. Um, so depending on what kind of yarn and the weight of yarn that you are using is going to be determined on your hook size. Now, typically, if I'm using a worsted weighted yarn, I will go or I will use a five millimeter hook to a five and a half millimeter hook. But when making it in an amigurumi, I will go all the way down to a four and a quarter millimeter hook, maybe even sometimes a four and a half millimeter. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day and the overall object of that amigurumi. Um, so again, you want to kind of go significantly down in a hook size, and that's all going to also depend on your tension, whether you are loose or a crochet, and also um, your yarn as well. So another way that you can actually stiffen up your amigurumi is the type of single crochet that we are going to be using or can use for your amigurumi. So typically when we crochet a single crochet, we will go in to that stitch and we'll yarn over. Now for amigurumis to tighten up your stitches and not have it so holy is instead of going for a yarn over, we are going to go for a yarn under. So again, typically we would yarn over our hook, but for an amigurumi, when you're doing a single crochet, you want to yarn under and then pull that loop through your stitch and then just finish off your single crochet. Um, what that does is it tightens up your stitch and also, as you can see, there's not that many holes within that stitch, not as if like we were to do a regular single crochet. You see the difference between the two? Um, now, to do a increasing stitch for an amigurumi, I'm going to finish this uh, off real quick. Um, to do an increase without having a gap, in the project, what we are going to do, which is called a um, invisible increase or decrease. And how we're going to accomplish that is we will go, let me zoom in real quick. We are going to go into that very first loop. So typically we will go in between those two or underneath those two loops. To do an invisible increase, we are going to go underneath just that very first loop. 
And then we are going to do our increasing stitch, our very first increasing stitch. And then when we do our increase, the second stitch for our increase, we are going to go through both of those loops. And what this does is it will kind of close up any kind of gap that you might have when doing an increasing stitch as just a regular crochet. And here is the quick difference between the two. There's not much of a difference, but especially like when decreasing, you will see that significant difference. And that's kind of what we're going to do the same thing as far as decreasing. So to do a decreasing or an invisible decrease, we are going to go into that very first loop and we're going to start off our decreasing stitch. So we're not going to pull through those two loops just yet. And then we will go in through the two loops for the second stitch for our decrease and draw up a loop and then we will pull through all of those loops. And again, that will kind of close up any gaps that we might have when doing an increase or decreasing stitch. Now, the last tip or trick that I want to share with you guys, which I haven't um, crocheted this up enough to actually stuff it, I have found when I stuff my amigurumis, I don't just stuff it all at once. I will stuff it gradually while I'm crocheting, but I will kind of stuff it around the edges and kind of flatten out those edges. That way there's not bumps um, when stuffing your amigurumi. And then once I have all of the edging stuffed, that's when I will stuff the middle. Also, when stuffing your amigurumi, you don't want to overstuff or understuff. You want to kind of have like a medium. Um, overstuffing will kind of cause your stitches to stretch out, and that's not what the look we're aiming for, and might even cause the filling to poke out. Now, understuffing will cause your amigurumi to look floppy. And um, you, like I said, you want to kind of have a medium. Now with the legs and the arms and sometimes even a tail, I will understuff those. That way it kind of does give a more um, free flowing look for it. Or um, if it's kids playing with it, then that's fine. Um, that way it's not so stiff and you can move those arms a little bit more natural, I guess. Um, but as far as the head, the neck, and the body, I will stuff those a lot more because that is what's going to keep your amigurumi upright. Um, so those are just some tips and tricks that I would love to share with you guys. Um, if you do have any tips and tricks that I might not have explained in this video, please feel free to put those down in the comments so that other people can read those and might help somebody else out. Um, or even myself out that I might not even be aware of. Um, but if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always also ask me down in the comment section or even email me. My email will be down in the description box. Um, but I hope you guys did enjoy some of these tips and tricks. And um, again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, but I hope you all have a wonderful day and great success with your amigurumis. And I really, really help, hope this helps somebody in the future. Um, and I will see you guys next time.